Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. We need you to do one more thing. Hit subscribe and smash that little bell so you can be notified every day. We've got a new author, artist, filmmaker, musician, a creative mind of any kind right here on the Hanging With Web Show. And right now we're at IBF 2019 in Orlando, Florida. We're hanging out with Hanging With Web Show alumnus <laughs> and good friend Elizabeth Schechter. We're going to talk a little bit about written in water and writing. And we're going to talk about her journey and our journey. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So stick around, stay here and hang out with us. Elizabeth, thank you for hanging Hi. out with us again. How are good you? Good to see you. It has been four years. Four, is, is it just four? It feels just like four, it's four years since SFSE mm -hmm. in, right here in Orlando. Yes. Right? Um, you know what's amazing is that, and, and, and we will do this on camera because I wanted to, I want to thank you because we interviewed you at SFSE mm -hmm. and after the interview you and, I, you and I were talking and you said, are you going to, is your show going to be at these different places? And at that time, the, when you said that, I didn't have a show. I had a camera phone and a microphone. Yeah. And, uh, we went home and I, that, that that question simmered in my mind for a couple of days. And a couple of days later, I looked at the girls and I said, we have a show. And, and, <laughs> and two weeks later, I was at Necronomicon in Tampa. Oh, awesome. Doing interviews. Awesome. And so that all came from that conversation between you and I. <laughs> uh, me actually going home and saying, you know what, we can do this. <laughs> and make it something, and now welcome to the set. This is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> you know, I am so happy to hear it is all my fault. It is all your fault. <laughs> uh, it is, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inspiring us to, to inspire other people, because that's what we want to do. Got you know? that. And so thank you for that. Good. Let's talk about Written in Water. What do we got here? Written in Water is something that was entirely new for me. Okay. I had a Patreon for years and years and years and never did anything with it. And finally, I'm like, I need to do something. And I, I write, I have been writing speculative smut for years. Speculative I write, smut, I love it. Uh, and it's been getting, it's been getting harder for erotic writers to. <laughs> There's no pun there, I'm sure. Yeah, Just, no <laughs> pun at all. Nope, nope, nope. Not even, not even a subconscious pun. Yeah. Because of the venues. Uh, locking right locking erotica out locking erotic romance out there's so much it, the, the views of writing have been getting more and more puritanical so it's been starting to get harder to make a living as an erotica writer as an erotic romance writer mm -hmm. so I decided to try something a little different this is a new adult fantasy okay and what's making this fun is that it's been written entirely in real time on my patreon really Everything started from the ground up on Patreon last year at IBF. Wow. I, all of the world building, all of the character creation, all of the world creation, everything. So your patrons get to see as you sit down and just put, uh, put One, it one chapter goes up a week, every week. There's minimal editing. So they actually see the entire the process. The raw process. The raw yeah. process right from the writer brain. And then when I get to a point where, okay, we've got a book here. Then the book comes out, but um, the serial is still going on. I am most of the way through book two wow. on the Patreon. And book two, um, there's actually a card in here, or there should be. Book two, Forged in Fire, will be out in October, probably for Necronomicon. That's fantastic. And there's four books planned in the series. Uh, it's been a re it's been an interesting I writing was say, experiment. Now, um, as a writer, so much of what we do is um, in seclusion. Mm -hmm. It's it's you and your keyboard and your imagination, and and that the collaboration is is purely internal. What you've done is take that and made it a, a, an audience participation. It's thing. It's audience participation and a spectator sport. <laughs> wow, um, what's that been like to write under such scrutiny? I mean, that is, look. When you turn your stuff into your editor for the first time, that scrutiny is expected. It's part of the process. Mm -hmm. But having your readers be that beta editor, mm -hmm. seeing the raw content before you've edited it, before you've checked things out, what's that like for you to be under such scrutiny? There's a lot of, because of the way I'm doing it, I'm getting real-time feedback mm -hmm. from my patrons, from the people who are reading it from the word go. And it's the, 
for well, for one thing, I'm getting feedback on you uh, changed this character's name from you know last chapter. Which we do that. Which by we, the do way. That, we do that. We do yeah. that. Uh, in one of my books, I had the incredible wandering war wound. It changed from left leg to right leg to left I, leg I, to right I, leg. I, I wanna, and we fixed that. I want to <laughs> remind everybody out there, readers. Readers today are far more sophisticated than they've probably ever been. Especially oh, yes. when they're paying attention to continuity things and things like that. I want to remind people that we didn't invent the mistakes that we make, that they've been being made a long time. In, in true story, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, John Watson, Dr. John Watson, um, his name wasn't always John Watson. It was James. It was James and John, and he kept making mistakes trying to figure out what he had done. Well, the phrase, the incredible wandering war wound, actually Comes originated from talking from Watson because right. it was leg, arm, shoulder, what? That's right, yeah. yeah. And then in, in the modern television adaptation, they finally just went with PTSD and called it a day mm -hmm. because then you can have anything right. you know, psychosomatically. And I, I think it was the, the shoulder war, the wound, shoulder war it, wound that invalided him and the hip was, and, and the limp was psychosomatic. It was psychosomatic, that's right, which is a play on Arthur Conan Doyle's inability to remember how he wounded his his primary supporting character mm -hmm. um, and sometimes what his name was and Mrs. Hudson was not always Mrs. Hudson she was there was another landlady there was another I, think landlady, I, remember, landlady, I can't yes. think of her name um, and in the and I remember watching in the show Mrs. Hudson comes in and she actually refers to the neighbor lady and says Mrs. so-and-so had yes uh, uh, and when she Turner Mrs. Turner Mrs. had Turner. had uh, you know Mary once a married, next door, yes, a married, married couple, and so, um, which was a, a an, another nod to Arthur Conan mm -hmm. Doyle's inability to remember his character's there, name. There are so many Easter eggs in the Sherlock yeah. Holmes, uh, in the modern Sherlock Holmes, uh, including that on Sherlock Holmes's bookshelf is a book that's introduced in Doctor Who as they've been written by Sarah Jane Smith's aunt. Wow, <laughs> you can know see, that, you and that's a Stephen Moffat reference yeah, because Stephen and. and uh, Mark Gaddis were, were showrunners, mm -hmm. and Stephen was doing Doctor Who at the time. So. Right, so it's the, okay, you could think that this is just the BBC prop guys going, oh, look, we need books, or Sherlock what happens in the Doctor Who universe. That's kind of I nice. like that I one. I like that one, too. That's kind of fun. Um, that's what's fun about having Elizabeth on the show. We can talk books. We can talk geekery. Just anything. And it's cool. I'm a multifaceted fan. That's that's <laughs> awesome. So Forge and Fire is the next one, and you're Forged working and on fire. this. This is this is almost done. It, it it is. I have a draft. A draft. I actually okay. have the draft with me. I'm working on edits when awesome. I have a free minute. Awesome. And then this is how many is this going to be? It's going to be four books. Four total. Okay. Yes. The elementals. And I take it. They're elemental. And it books. is elemental, and okay. I'm having the wonderful challenge of figuring out how not to make it sound like Avatar The Last Airbender because we have four elemental based tribes. <laughs> what, but the elemental uh, el elemental books that uh, harken back about 1500 years by the way. Okay. We've been talking about the the four primary oh, there were five primary elements. There were the four mm -hmm. physical elements and then the ether yes. which is the ethereal element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hence the word ethereal never mind. <laughs> it's YouTube. They'll figure it out. They can google it. Um, so all right, so now you're writing these in real time. Yes. You're getting feedback from readers in real yes. time. Um, the, that has uh, an impact on you as a writer because you're getting this feedback in real time. Mm -hmm. um, you get to see your mistakes. Yes. Probably because the Internet is so kind. My patrons have been wonderful with that. Thank it's you, been... patrons. Because sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're like, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind today? And... <laughs> No, my patrons have been very supportive. They've been really, really uh, wonderful in terms of catching me when I make a continuity error. And just the general feedback has been fantastic. Awesome. That is, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, how many books is this for you now? I mean, you've got, like you said, you've uh, been, writing I've been writing speculative smut. I love that term, but I'm going <laughs> to use that a lot now. Um, that, that came out of this past oasis. I had been on seven or eight panels. It was Sunday morning. I'm on the panel. I have to interview, introduce myself for the gazillion tea time. And I was tired. So I sat there like this at the table and went, hi, I'm Liz. I write speculative smut. And it just kind of stuck. <laughs> I, I was at, uh, we were at Space Coast Book Lovers a few weeks back. And I was sitting at a table uh, at, during the round table, like it was a speed dating. Mm -hmm. The readers would come up and they would say hi to you and then they would go to the next yeah. one. And um, about the third or fourth rotation in, right, I happened to be at a table uh, with Abigail Lee Justice. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they were going around the table and you know, I said, I'm with the Hanging Web Show and I write, you know, mysteries. 
and Abigail, they got to Abigail and she said, hi, I'm Abigail and I write porn. <laughs> Shut the table down and just, the whole table went dead silent. It was amazing. Uh, and it just, I thought to myself, I'm not, I can't follow that. So that's speculative smut. I yes. love it. That's perfect. And, and uh, to go back to your question of how many books I think I'm up to 12 or 14, but I keep forgetting to count before I sit down and where someone's going to ask me that question. Uh, <laughs> we're I'm lucky. I'm at five and I'm good. And it's <laughs> technically four because one of them is, is uh, one of those, it's, uh, it's a, it's a how to, so it's timely and it, it always changes. Mm -hmm. So that'll be on its like third edition and I had to pull it down so that I could update it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I never kind of counted. I'm like, okay, just four. <laughs> which always makes me feel like a slacker and, and especially around my peers because you know oh 12 19 i sat somebody in the chair yesterday with a four-year writing career and they said something about like 25 i was like <laughs> that's that's the tempo on that the pace on that it's it's like uh, yeah um they're the one of the presenters here mal is wrote 44 books in one year and i'm like you didn't sleep or eat it, yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> Very skinny, gaunt person. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> seen them, but I'm, I'm assuming based on 44 books 44 in a year. 44 books in a year. Wow. That's an incredible pace. Yes. That's, I mean. I, that, it, it, it wouldn't be sustainable to me, but more power to her. Go for it. That's right. Where are you going to be next? Where are we going to see you next? Uh, next, I'm going to be, uh, next month, there's Kaiser Supercon, which is a brand new thing. Wow. At Kaiser University in Orlando. And then in October, I'll be at Necronomicon. Awesome. We will see you at Necro. Oh, awesome. we're, we're definitely planning on that one. So, guys, we have to wrap it up. We've been hanging out with Elizabeth Schechter. We were talking about Written in Water and the next one coming out, Forged in Fire. There will be four. Check out her patron. We're going to drop a link down below so you can watch this in real time. See it unfold from the writer's mind onto the page. And then what happens to it? Because that metamorphosis from your rough draft from to the rough your draft to the edited is amazing. version. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to say thank you to our partners and friends, our great friend Rick Shea at Famous Faces and Funnies, our great friend over at Hearts Helping Others of Central Florida, the Foxwood Wine Company, uh, Cliff and Rebecca for all of their support. We want to thank the Cogler Emporium. Josh Bauer at J Bauer Art for all the fantastic art that adorns our set. Our great friends at Indie Originals and Space Coast Comics, thank you for tuning in and logging on. Hit subscribe, come back, and see who we're hanging with next. Awesome, Elizabeth. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, it was fun.